As the winter of 1942 gripped the Eastern Front in its icy embrace, the German defeat in the brutal Battle of Stalingrad had left the once formidable German Front weakened and vulnerable. By January 1943, Soviet forces were already in motion, plotting and executing daring offensives across the vast expanse of the German-Soviet front. Operation Iskra marked the beginning of a series of bold offensives by the Soviets, aimed squarely at delivering a decisive blow to Germany's Army Group North. Amidst the howling winds and swirling snowflakes, the stage was set for a showdown of epic proportions as the Soviets sought to turn the tide of war in their favor. On January 12, 1943, the Soviets launched a massive assault, known as the Second Battle of Lake Ladoga, targeting the narrow German-held corridor south of Schlüsselburg with a relentless bombardment from 4,500 artillery guns, lasting 140 minutes. This barrage aimed to weaken German defenses and pave the way for a strategic breakthrough. Following the artillery barrage, the Soviet 2nd Shock Army launched an attack from the east, while the 67th Army advanced from the west. Their objective, to smash through the German corridor and establish vital ground communication lines to Leningrad. As the battle raged on, the situation grew dire for the Germans. Recognizing the gravity of the Soviet penetration, Commander-in-Chief of the 18th Army ordered in the Vatsminer, the 96th Infantry Division under Brigadier General Noel Deccan, to launch a counterattack. Despite being under strength, the division received orders to engage the enemy and push them back across the Newa River. The Vatsminer had only five Grenadier battalions at their disposal. Supporting them were 88mm guns from the 36th Flak Regiment, along with four Tiger tanks of the 1st Company of the 502nd Heavy Panzer Battalion under 1st Lieutenant von Gertel. Accompanying the Tigers were eight Panzer III's. One of the Tiger tanks was commanded by a 27-year-old Sergeant First Class, Hans Bolter, who served as a platoon leader in the 1st Company. With the stage set for a clash of titanic proportions, the outcome of the 2nd Battle of Lake Ladoga hung in the balance. The Vatsminer's counterattack would determine whether the Germans could stem the tide of the Soviet advance, or face the risk of losing control over vital strategic positions. Amidst swearing and grumbling, the grenadiers pressed forward, battling through the chest-deep snow. Each breath formed a misty cloud in the frigid night air as they trudged onward. Entering the forest, every brush against the young fir trees triggered a cascade of snow, further impeding their progress. As they advanced, speculation about potential Russian ambushes filled the air. The tension rose with every step, exacerbated by the distant sounds of Soviet artillery and machine gun fire. Suddenly, chaos erupted as the Russians launched a counterattack. Grenadiers sprang into action, their voices raised in a chorus of shouts and orders. Occasionally, the terrifying wails of a Stalin's organ pierced the air sending shivers down the spines of the men. Instinctively, they ducked as the rockets screamed towards them, explosions rocking the ground beneath their feet. Clutching their weapons and ammunition canisters tightly, they pressed forward with grim determination. Despite the perilous conditions, they pressed on, driven by a relentless determination to survive. As dawn broke, the Russian tanks rolled forward across the snow-covered fields, their menacing silhouettes looming towards the edge of the forest. Flames erupted from the muzzles of 24 tank cannons, their thunderous roar echoing through the stillness of the morning. The rounds tore through the air, slicing the tops off young trees, 
as snow-covered branches crashed down in their wake. As the battle intensified, the grenadiers launched a daring assault on the advancing enemy. With nerves of steel, they approached the tanks, planting explosive charges with precision. However, overwhelmed by the tank assault, they found themselves in need of panzer support to counter the threat. Calling Gertel, crackled the urgent voice over the radio. Enemy tanks have breached our main line of resistance. Tigers, attack. First Lieutenant Gertel took a moment to compose himself before issuing orders to his company to follow him. With a thunderous roar, the four tigers surged forward, their massive frames plowing through the snow and crushing trees in their path. As the first Soviet tanks came into view, Gertel gave the order to open fire. The gunners swiftly locked onto their targets, and in an instant, the 88s thundered to life. A barrage of shells erupted from the Tigers, finding their marks with deadly accuracy. Within moments, two T-34s were engulfed in flames from the initial volley. The tank crews operated with precision, seamlessly coordinating their actions. Before the Russian tankers could react, the Tigers unleashed another round of fire, resulting in two more T-34s igniting in flames. From a vantage point atop a rise, Gertel observed the battlefield, directing his gunners to engage incoming threats. Through his telescopic sight, the gunner spotted the next T-34, just as a tremendous crash reverberated through the fighting compartment. Reacting swiftly, Gertel ordered his driver to advance forward and to the left, towards the source of the shots from the trees. But before the commander's tank could maneuver, it was struck again, the round piercing the steel of the gun mantlet and claiming the life of the gunner. Undeterred, Gertel pressed on, rallying his remaining three Tigers to continue the fight. With relentless determination, Hans Bolter and his comrades methodically eliminated enemy tanks, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. After the final T-34 vanished from sight, 12 Soviet tanks lay ablaze and smoldering in the moor. It marked the first demonstration of the Tiger's lethal capabilities. Gertel's disabled Tiger was later recovered. As evening descended and the Soviets launched another assault, the call for Tiger support echoed once more through the ranks of the Grenadiers. The commanding officer raised his hand as he ordered Bolter to move out with his platoon and to call if things became precarious, since they needed to rearm first. Bolter's expression was solemn and focused as he stood in the open turret hatch, surveying the surroundings. With a wave to his company commander, he issued the order to move out. The two Tiger tanks advanced through the snow, their white-painted exteriors blending seamlessly with the twilight. Suddenly, the crack of an enemy anti-tank gun pierced the air, prompting Bolter to quickly take cover inside the turret. The round narrowly missed overhead, but the crew remained undeterred. Bolter commanded to open fire, as Gunner Groschel targeted the source of enemy fire. With precision aim, he neutralized the threat, causing a devastating explosion in the enemy position. Target identified, called Groschel, aligning his aim with the new enemy. The driver halted instantly. With a slight correction, Groschel fired. The Tiger recoiled from the shot, and moments later, a bright column of flame erupted from the Russian tank. Target down, shouted Bolter with relief, anticipating another attack from the T-34. In these ruthless battles, victory favored the swift. Speed was essential for survival against such a relentless enemy. 
sprays of snow erupted like geysers on either side of Bolter's tiger. A blinding flash lit the fighting compartment as a round detonated nearby, showering the tank with steel shrapnel and chunks of frozen earth. Amidst the darkness, shadowy figures emerged ahead, prompting Bolter to order the turret and bow machine guns to open fire. The second tiger joined in the barrage, effectively suppressing the enemy. With relief, Bolter identified a target and directed Groschel to engage. The tiger's firepower proved overwhelming, causing the enemy tanks to ignite in flames. Despite their success, the situation remained precarious as more enemy tanks closed in. With quick thinking and precise maneuvers, the Tiger crew evaded enemy fire and maintained their advantage. As the intense battle raged on, the Tiger faced continuous threats from all sides. However, the crew's coordination and resilience proved invaluable as they repelled each enemy onslaught. In the chaos of battle, Bolter's Tiger faced a direct hit, but the formidable armor withstood the impact. With determination, they pressed on, delivering devastating blows to the enemy forces. With each successful engagement, the enemy's respect for the Tigers grew evident as they spread word of their fearsome reputation. As the night sky echoed with the thunderous sounds of tank cannons and the relentless chatter of machine gun fire, the battlefield became a cauldron of chaos. Grenades exploded amidst bursts of Russian machine gun fire, testing the resolve of the grenadiers as they fought to hold their ground. Despite their valiant efforts, the Soviet troops, deprived of their protective armor, found themselves driven back by the determined German defenders. However, the respite was short-lived as three more T-34s emerged from the darkness, threatening the Tiger. In a rapid exchange of firepower, the Tiger withstood the onslaught, its armor proving impervious to the enemy's attacks. With precision and efficiency, Gunnar Groschel neutralized the immediate threat, sending one T-34 up in flames with a direct hit, and the others fleeing in retreat. Bolter ordered his driver Holzel to go after them, recognizing the need to neutralize the threat and prevent a resurgence of the enemy's attack. The Tiger surged forward, its powerful engine propelling it across the battlefield. Spotting the retreating enemy tanks, Groschel took aim and fired, unleashing a torrent of flames that engulfed the T-34s in a fiery inferno. As the dust settled, Bolter counted his victories, seven enemy tanks destroyed in a single operation. With the immediate threat neutralized, Bolter directed the Tiger to return to the safety of the German lines. However, communication with the second Tiger proved futile, as the radio operator, discovered the equipment had been damaged in the heat of battle and informed it to Bolter. Just as Bolter was about to respond, a powerful impact jolted the Tiger. Hidden the engine, shouted the radio operator. As Bolter contemplated their next move after the Tiger was hit, chaos erupted as a second round struck the tank, igniting a fire within. With the smell of gasoline filling the air and flames engulfing the rear of the tank, urgency gripped the crew. We're on fire shouted Holzel, prompting Bolter to issue orders for evacuation. With swift action, the crew leapt out of the tank, with Bolter instinctively drawing his pistol as he exited the turret. Hans Bolter attempted to regain his bearings. Where was the second Tiger? And where were the Panzer threes that were supposed to be backing them up? Where were his comrades? As the Russians began to regain their composure after the panic caused by the two Tigers, likely intensified by the sight of the seven burning tank wrecks, 
the sergeant scanned the area. Behind those young fir trees, he guessed, must be where Sergeant First Class Schutz's tiger was. Hopefully, Bolter stood up and dashed forward a few steps. Several Russian soldiers approached, shouting something at him. Bolter motioned ahead and turned his face away. Once the Russians had moved on, Bolter dropped to the ground and crawled away to the side, finding himself relatively alone. With a sigh of relief, he took a moment to catch his breath. As Bolter navigated through the darkness, he encountered Russian soldiers regrouping, likely awaiting the next assault. Determined to find his comrades and the second tiger, he cautiously made his way through enemy lines, utilizing the cover of darkness to evade detection. Suddenly, the roar of an engine broke through the tense silence, emanating from the direction where the German tanks were expected to be. Meter by meter, Bolter stealthily navigated through the enemy skirmish lines. The freezing cold penetrated his winter gear, biting at him relentlessly. At one point, a Russian officer called out to him, gesturing toward the German lines. Bolter responded with incomprehensible sounds, blending in with a group of Russians for a brief period before slipping away once more. In the cover of darkness, he found refuge, knowing that if it were light, the Russians would have easily identified him and likely opened fire. All of a sudden, the second tiger emerged from the darkness, its presence announced by a blinding flash as its main gun discharged. Nearby, a high explosive round pounded into the ground. Both machine guns roared to life. In a reflex, Bolter sought cover in a snow-filled depression wary of being mistaken for the enemy by his own comrades. How could he make himself known? With caution, he maneuvered to the right, inching closer to the tiger. As it approached his position, he leaped onto the rear mudguard and crept forward towards the radio operator's hatch. But before he could announce himself, a shout rang out, Russian on the tank. Bolter heard the call, though weakly, understanding its implications. As he crouched near the tiger, a burst of Russian gunfire whizzed past him. Then, the turret hatch swung open, revealing the tank commander holding a pistol in his right hand. It's me, Schutze, he called out urgently. As Schutze recognized his platoon leader, Bolter swiftly climbed inside. His initial words upon entering were, my crew must be somewhere nearby. In fact, the other four men were nearby. Soon, they were also on board Schutz's tank. As the Tiger turned for home, Bolter finally realized he had received three fragment wounds when his tank was hit. That will get you home, Hans, remarked the battalion medical officer, acknowledging Bolter's recovery. Yet, Bolter wasn't eager to return home, knowing the critical need for every tank commander in the ongoing battles. Instead, he was sent to a field hospital behind the front lines. However, eight days later, he defied medical orders and walked out of the hospital, driven by a sense of duty to his comrades. Upon his return to the battalion, Bolter was met with grim news. His company commander, First Lieutenant Bodo von Gertel had been killed in action, leaving a void in leadership filled by First Lieutenant deals. Further up the chain of command, Major Marker had been wounded, and Captain Walschlager was now acting as battalion commander. The Panzer III crews suffered severe losses, with 17 men losing their lives and several others seriously wounded. The situation was made even graver by a devastating air attack on the regiment's command post, resulting in the deaths of 23 officers and men from the tank battalion's trains. Despite these losses, the defenders managed to repel the Russian assault, preventing the enemy from reaching their objective, the Kiro railway line. Nevertheless, Leningrad Radio announced the breaking of the German blockade on January 18th, 1943, 
following the recapture of Schlüsselburg and other territory by Soviet forces. To secure their gains and further break the blockade, the Soviets embarked on the second and third phases of the Second Battle of Lake Ladoga, aiming to seize control of the Kiro railway line and the vital junction at Mga. Hans Bolter continued his defensive fight at Leningrad, adding to his count of destroyed enemy tanks. He is renowned as one of the most accomplished panzer aces, credited with over 130 tank kills.